Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for your patience and our apologies for the mayhem. Uh, we may have a few more who trickle in. We may not. We'll see. Um, yes. Hopefully, you all had an all right journey getting here. Um, but moving on, uh, we wanted to tell you a bit today about where we are with our LDD automation project. Um, just to get a sense, a show of hands, who here has been involved in some way or other with the project and has a little bit of an understanding of what we're doing? If you don't, that's okay, just, just to know. All right, two thirds. So we'll, we'll give you a quick overview to those who are uh, brand new, but we won't spend too long on that. Um, and we have our delivery partners, Atkins, with us today. Will, we've got Angus in the audience. Um, and then we have the LVD team, Peter, Alex, Craig, and Simon, and myself. I'm Molly, I should have said that. Um, and Jack may be joining us if he is able to arrive. Thank Great. You. Hello. Welcome. Come on in. Um, Enjoy talking. Uh, I'm really Haven't missed much yet. Um, so we'll just get started. So just to give it a bit of structure, um, we're just going to speak under these kind of clear headings. But so we're going to talk about the project just very briefly, um, then an update on the portal. Uh, the database and then visualization of some of the data so you can actually start to see what what things might look and feel like. We've got a number of key challenges that we want to talk about as well, so we'll, we'll come on to those at the right moment. Right moments. If you could store your questions for the end, that would be truly awesome. Um, but don't worry, the end's not too far away. Um, and then hopefully the building will all be unlocked by the end of the year. And we're going to aim to end at four still, so we'll, we'll go really fast. So, first of all, the LTD, um, don't, there are people in the room that have previously and currently contributed mm -hmm. to the LTD, but the, the data that it produces actually feeds a number of different things. I just to touch on them really carefully. Um, so, the first one is Molly's PET, the IMA. Um, second, uh, but perhaps more importantly, we use it to monitor London, the London plan, but we also use it to plan for all, a lot of things relating to future population in London. Um, I always have to take the opportunity to highlight that the population of London now is almost the same as the highest it has ever been. So that's part of why this is so important to get right. And just to briefly explain what the IMA is, basically we use the LDD data, among other things, to help infrastructure providers plan proactively for where growth is likely to happen. That also helps boroughs plan proactively in their local plans. It helps all types of planning efforts, um, as well as monitoring the London plan, which is visualized there. So, I'm trying to simplify this as we've managed to get the message out there to most people. But in practice, this project's about formally changing the process of how we collect data on planning applications. As part of it, we're changing some of the data as well. But in the top, right, top corner, we have the current process, which is some poor planning officer somewhere goes through all of the applications, answers up to 170 data points, and then manually feeds it into our data system. We're going to the version on the bottom right-hand corner, and I must get rid of the background, it has to be said, um, which is basically the applicant enters the data at the start and amends the data during the planning process, so that the data just transfers without us needing that intermediary step. It's not quite that simple, but almost. And to kind of explain that a little further. The issue right now is that currently, when you are an agent or a developer entering information into a planning application, most of the important details that we need to know for that planning and monitoring work are stuck in PDF documents that can't be really easily understood or transferred. So this project pulls that information out into machine-readable fields that then allow us to automate the monitoring at the end. I have to stop for a second, um, and I've missed two, two of us off here, but um, just to highlight, we've managed to engage with all of the back office system providers in London. Um, this project's funded by the GLA and the MHCLG, but these are all of our partners, just so that you, you've got some confidence that actually everyone's engaged with it. And the reason why that's important is that we're taking the systems as is across local authorities, all of our 35 planning authorities. We're not saying re-procure your back office system. We're not saying change how you, how you do your, your planning application storage. We're simply saying, given the system that you currently have, how can we make this automation work really simply um, between now and when we go live in the new year? So it's just to kind of update on some of the big steps we've done since we did our last um, show and tell. 
the first piece, big piece, is that we've had a lot of feedback about the need to engage with the development industry more. Um, so we had a user research event with the development industry in the room next door, um, where we took a bit of time to, uh, to kind of unpick how they felt about development data. And we had lots of different messages out of that process, I think it would be fair to say. Um, on one side you had, uh, hallelujah, there's one evidence base for us, at last we can kind of see what's going on, we, we can get a better and cleaner picture. And then at the other end of the spectrum there was the, how dare you ask for data, but, but that's my client's confidential information, how dare you want it. So the right place is somewhere between those two ends of the spectrum. Um, it's one that we're still trying to learn and we recognise in this, this iteration of the project it will have winners and losers on that kind of point. But what, what it's really doing is setting a whole new groundwork, a whole new starting point for developers and then recognising that they're going to have to be a little bit more open in the planning process with us. I think one of the sorry, one of the, yeah. I think one of the core things we learned as well from that was um, actually the process of owning their own applications data was not perfect for developers as it is. And I think one of the big things they said was actually having better ownership themselves, so their mistakes are their mistakes, but their corrections are their corrections, and not necessarily relying on a, an interface with a planning officer to update their information, which by its nature is going through a secondary route, was something they welcomed and thought would be, would be quite valuable. So that, that was really promising for us, and, and tied into, I think, sort of some of the next steps of the project we're going through over the next few months. And just one thing to add to that as well is that one of the big questions we were asking them is, given that we're adding fields to London's planning application as part of this project, the machine-readable fields that capture, in most cases, data that's already existing in the PDFs, how easy would this be to, to complete on the first submission of the application? And across the board, we've, as Peter said, we got a mix of answers, but generally speaking, people were not, uh, did not believe that it would be overly difficult to, to do that up front, and that was really positive news for us because uh, it means that the development industry is likely to embrace this project given the positive outcomes that it could provide to them as well. The other big things that we always kind of get quizzed about is, okay, so where's the planning portal in all of this as the, as the biggest system for submission? Um, sec secondary submission systems that exist, like the Snook one at Hackney, um, have actually integrated our data requirements already. Um, but the big one was always going to be the planning portal. Um, we continue to work quite closely with them. You, if you're in this space, you may have spotted that they've it published their final technical standards, so their schema, but now, so everybody is working to the same structure. Um, they are building their test platform for us at the moment, but just to kind of put it in context, they're going to be looking to relaunch their platform very shortly anyway, um, so they're talking about February time for the questions to be able to appear for the first time. Um, ironically, they're talking about Valentine's Day, so at least I've got benchmarks that I might remember. Um, just moving, moving yeah. swiftly well, on to the other learning. One, one big thing to point out here is the question, we are writing some guidance um, to, around the new question, so if you're keen to get involved, you can help us out. Yeah, please do. Um, particularly if there's questions on the planning application form that you don't think you can answer, because that's actually the only way we're going to be able to get the best out of this, because the quality of the data is only going to be as good as the way the questions are asked and the guidance that we give people how to answer them. So if, if there's stuff that you don't understand, you're probably the best person for us to work with, so please do let us. And, and you can Same. find the new questions on our website. So if you just Google LDD automation, you can look at our combined planning data standard and that captures all the new questions. I guess the final point on that is before the formal launch, we will be doing a full sort of everything works, please come and break it with us and ask questions and see which bits are confusing or not confusing down the line. So there'll be a note on that. I apologise for the quality of this slide. I can't find the ticks or the crosses anywhere in the uh, <laughs> PowerPoint. Um, we, um, I'll just explain where we are. Things have moved on slightly since we, we uh, since I wrote this slide. Um, IDOCs have kind of very positively um, engaged and have proof of concept that we'll show you in a minute. 
Um, Northgate are still working on where they are with their proof of concept, and we don't have a timetable for the rollout of their solution, but they have engaged with us and we've set up the contractual arrangements with them, so they are moving on. So I perhaps ought to even take, turn that cross into more kind of a question mark tick. Um, Ocella and Agile um, are complete, essentially, are they? Agile's still working on it. Yeah. Ocella are complete. And then um, Arcus and Toscomi, which there are boroughs in London that are moving to, um, will be completing this as part of their original build, so it's actually built into their system as we go. So, moving swiftly on. Oh, I should have changed the colour. Sorry. Um, We've just put a couple of screenshots on from IDOC so that people can, anybody on any of the IDOC solutions, so this is from the Uniform solution, can see how we're addressing it. Do you want to talk about these at all? Or? Um, and I mean, it's, 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 so this is just um, a, a mock up really of the new screens, some of the new screens that they're going to provide. Um, so some of this is about the building information. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so what, the, what they've done is they've used existing tabs in, in, the, in the software and created new fields in the tabs so that it won't overwrite any of your existing data. Because I know when I used to run an IDOCS instance, um, I used to be forever using fields that I didn't think anyone would notice for, for inappropriate purposes. So with, um, <laughs> so I, I like performance management, what can I say? Um, so what we've, the way that they've done it is they're actually building the, the new fields in places where, in practice, you may not notice them. This is really important because at the end of the day, if you're wanting to play with your own data as well, or if you want to change any of the data because you can't persuade the developer to, then we want that functionality to exist somewhere in the uniform. And we're going to have to look at how we show everybody where that data is hidden. So just for anybody who's feeling completely lost at this moment, to take a step back, what we're looking at here is what a local authority would see in their own back office system once the new fields are introduced in the planning portal. The idea being there's new fields on the planning application, there should be new spaces in your back office system to hold those fields. The story's a little more complex than that, we'll get to in a moment, but that's the, that's the concept that we're talking about here. But I just want everybody to feel reassured that we're not doing stuff that's going to break your current setup, because I recognise that everybody has has um, come up with unique solutions to their own challenges by having other stuff in their back office system already. Um, and there's just another page of data. Oh, yes. So is this where we hand over to Will to talk about how, how our alpha is excitingly working? Yeah. Um, so. Thanks guys, I'm Oscar, um, I lead the Atkins team on this project. Um, don't look at the scary graphic. Um, Peter and Molly have sort of, to, sort of alluded to it, but there's two big bits to this project. One of them is the expanded, amended, wonderful uh, data standard, which will allow the GLA and yourselves to do really, really clever things, like ask questions of your applications across a multitude of them of, how many affordable homes am I building? That's my favorite example. So, Mr. Kemp, or, Madam Strauss, Miss Strauss, I don't know, I'm, I'm going on with this guys, it's Friday. Um, can query how many affordable homes are at different stages of the planning application in London when this project is finished. Now, there's that bit of the extra data, and then the other bit is kind of boring, and we kind of struggle to talk about how to show you it, because basically it means how does all of that handing off between data from applicant to back office provider to the GLA happen without anybody seeing it? So actually, you don't have to worry about it anymore, it just happens. So these are the sort of conversations we're having with the developer about how can we change how they put data in so it makes it all the way up and nobody really notices or understands what happens, but it happens seamlessly. Um, there's two ways of doing that. One of them is the, all of the people in the puzzle have wonderfully modern software and they pass all of the data through something called an API, an application programming interface, and basically it's all really sort of easy and clean. Um, in an effort to deal with providers who may not have that sort of slightly cutting edge or modern way of passing data, we've built something called a shortcut, which basically means for you guys, every single one of the back office providers will be able to get all of that information into the central monitoring system without anybody worrying about it. So I could go through the really detailed parts of this, but the only really important thing is we're fixing the sort of plumbing so you guys don't have to. Um, 
What then? I think we're flipping to the video at this point. Yes, we are flipping to the video. So again, um, it's quite challenging. No, oh, not that one. Don't, no, look, don't look, look at that one. Nice. <laughs> it's, it's our big Spoilers reveal. alert. Yeah. Wait, this is not the video. Which video is it in? Um, no. Hold on one second. Sorry, while, we, guys. While, we did, while we figure out where the video is, there is the video. <coughs> Honestly, we could have used the 20 minutes and just got locked in some store room somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There, there we, we go. go, there's a video. So, there was some sort of imposing, vaguely Star Wars esque music to it as well, but we didn't get the AV set up correctly. But um, over the last couple of months, we've basically got a complete proof of concept <coughs> of passing data from three authorities directly into the GLA back office system without touch. Four authorities now, apparently. There's another one online now. Um, the pace of change is wonderful. Um, what that means in reality is not a lot different to the current LDD, but all of the plumbing that makes the current LDD happen is now completely automated. So, so first of all, thank you to Andrew Marshall, who, who made us a video of him preparing a planning application in IDOL. So at present, we have approved the bit from pushing from planning portal, but in future, you would be approving an application from an applicant after you checked it, at which point it goes straight into the system, we refresh, and the new points appear on the map the without any of the apps for it. There was a lot of work putting into making those three little points appear without anybody else doing anything. So, so what you just saw was a borough officer entering new details into, a planning, uh, into their IDOC system, and then that information traveling across to the GLA map, which when refreshed, had those new planning applications visible in it with no work by a planning officer in the middle. Does that I make sense? That, that, so, sorry to interrupt, but the reason that that bit's important is because it proves that if data sat in a back office system somewhere, there is a technical way for us to get that data in relatively light time. So then the only other challenge to that is how do you get the data into the back of the system to start with. So that's that's where why that bit's really important, just for anybody who really thinks we're talking complete nonsense there. Is, it, <laughs> is anybody utterly confused or has no idea why this makes any sense? We really do want to, we know this is technical. I, I know that's an embarrassing thing to admit to in a, in a large group of people. But I'll take it that, that you're following. Let it's us an know. awful lot of show and tell for three red dots. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for those three red dots over the past six or eight months. But in practice, it means that any attribute data relating to that can also pass, which is why it's really important to us. Just followed perfectly uh, from what Peter was just saying. What is our next priority? Over to Peter. Over to me. Um, our next priority is the connection between planning portal and the back office system. So you just saw the bit from the back office system to the GI 